ChatGPT5 is finally here and it's unlike any other upgrade that ChatGPT has rolled out. I'm really excited to show you what's new with it. I have a bunch of different prompts I'm gonna test out here in my account. And the nice thing is, starting today, it's getting released to everyone. So for the first time, they are putting their very best model available for free users. It's available in the Plus, Teams, and the Pro Plan too. Okay, so the very first obvious thing that you'll see once you get ChatGPT5 is if you click this dropdown, you don't see a bunch of models anymore. The reason is they have deprecated every single model before GPT-5. So no more reasoning models. This is a hybrid model. It has reasoning built in. You don't have to choose it. In the paid plan though, they do have one other model, which you won't see in the free plan, called GPT-5 thinking which will think longer. You basically force it to think longer. But the default GPT plan does have reasoning and thinking built in. It will decide how long to think. Now, GPT-5 is supposed to work really well with this agent mode. So it's supposed to be an agentic AI. And I've been able to test it a little bit. And I want to make a really in-depth video showing now the agent mode. Because when I first cover agent mode, it wasn't very good. And I think because it was really designed to work with GPT-5. So now if I combine with GPT-5 and agent mode, we should be able to get a lot further than we were in our initial testing. And it works with all the other tools that we've had so far. So we could generate images with it, all the canvas modes, the deep research mode, any type of connected apps, pulling things from your Google Drive. And next week is also getting connected to Gmail and Google Calendar. So that's getting released next week too. Okay, let's go ahead and do some prompt testing. I'm just going to do a very basic one here to check his ability to find the latest information. So we're going to use this as a search engine first. So I'm going to create a table comparing GPT-5 to GPT-40. This was the last model we had. Okay, and it works pretty good. The speed is not noticeably different. It's a little bit faster, but GPT-40 was also pretty fast. And it did pull all the right information. It gave the sources right next to the information, which is useful. Now with the Pro and the Plus plan, you will get more usage. I believe the free plan gets you about 30. But if you do run out of GPT-5 credits with the free plan, it just downgrades you to another model they have in the background called GPT-5 Mini. So you won't really notice that big of a difference, but it will downgrade you to the mini version. You will have more access once you run out of GPT-5 credits. They have a bunch of benchmarks and things like that, but again, I wanna show you real tests here, so I'm not gonna show you the benchmarks, but if you wanna check that out, you could check out the blog page I'll link below. Now, one key thing that I'm hoping to see in my testing is they said this hallucinates a lot less and it's a lot better at providing accurate information. That's one of the biggest limitations in AI. If they do fix hallucination, it will completely change how the world works, but right now we still are going to be having that as our issue. It just says it's now limited compared to the previous model, but we'll see. Now, let me try its multi-step reasoning. Now I'm gonna have a lot of work and business prompts and I'll do some coding prompts too. Now this is kind of an e-commerce type of prompt and I wanna see if it could predict possible outcomes and suggest how I would measure things. So I give us some information about different SKUs and things like that for a made up company. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this out. Any of these prompts, I'm not gonna read through. If you wanna pause it, I'll just kinda of tell you what the prompt is all about. Now this thought for 35 seconds, and the nice thing about this is you don't have to choose if you want reasoning, if you don't want reasoning, it's always going to have that chain of thought reasoning in the background, which is really nice. And 35 seconds, if you wanna see the thinking process is gonna give you a recap of it over here. And this is going to be my answer. Now, the whole point of GPT-5 is it's supposed to be a whole lot more useful. So just showing you the fact that this could output an answer, well, GPT-3 could output an answer too. But let me read the answer on my own, and then I'll let you know if I think it's better. I've used ChatGPT every single day since 2022 in real world use cases with business and work related tasks. So I'll have a good feeling about if I'm getting a much better answer here. Okay, I could tell just having some experience in these type of business models that this is actually very, very useful. So if I gave it some input and asked for it to predict possible outcomes, it gave me three really good ones. It explained a bottleneck here, two and three. The writing style, I also really like. We'll test it with some more practical examples like emails, but really good writing style. And as I'm going through this, I don't see a single 
M-Dash. And if you use ChatGPT, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It usually had just a random dash all over the place, right? And I don't even see a single one. I used to have to edit that manually. I thought it was some kind of watermark that they were putting there on purpose. Even if you prompt to remove it, it just would refuse. And it looks like we still have this option here where we could select some text and ask ChatGPT to just alter a very specific portion of the response and not the whole response. Okay, now I wanna analyze its writing. I wanna analyze how it repurposes content. A lot of people use it for this, so I think this would be a good prompt. Act as a world-class copywriter, repurpose a YouTube video into a blog post, into an X thread, into three email hooks, and extract key points and so on. Now, I didn't really define too much about the tone and the writing style, didn't give it a writing sample. I kinda wanna see what it does without too much information in the prompt here. So I'll pull in this entire transcript. This is actually a 30 minute video, my last video here. Let's see how it goes. Okay, let me paste the entire transcript of a 30 minute video here without any issues. Let's go ahead and send this out. Now this video had actually like 25 different things I covered and the key talking points, I wanted to see if it extracts the right things. And as I'm going through this, I know this video pretty well. I just finished it a few days ago and it's insanely good and in the right order on how I covered things in the transcript. Let's look at the blog version of it. The ultimate guide for Google Gemini free and paid features you should know. Okay, that's pretty close to my title actually. Google Gemini is more than just another AI chatbot. It's a complete AI workspace that can help you write, research, generate images and videos, and even integrate directly into your Google tools. Okay, so that is a, actually a great intro. I like the tone. Nothing just screamed that this is AI. Read a lot more human. I have a little M dash right here, but it kind of makes sense where it's at. It's not overly used. The core features are kind of broken down nicely. Okay, let's see the X thread. Google Gemini isn't just a chatbot, it's an AI powerhouse. Here's a quick tour on what it could do. Oh, this is a great thread actually. I like the format already. It's using emojis, but not overly using it. That looks pretty good here. Email hooks. Gemini, the AI upgrade you didn't know you needed. I like that subject line. From writing your next blog to generating a full video ad, Google Gemini has the tools you probably haven't tried yet. Man, that is good. You've heard of Gemini, but do you know how to unlock deep research, image generation, and even cinematic video creation? I really like these. I was not getting these type of results out of GPT-40. Okay, now let's see how it does with a follow-up prompt to rewrite something in a different style. Rewrite this in the voice of a stand-up comedian, a concerned parent, or unfiltered tech bro. Google Gemini, basically ChatGPT's cousin who went to an Ivy League school, got ripped, and now brags about, <laughs> brags about it at Thanksgiving. Pretty good for the stand-up comedian version of it. Okay, concerned parent. Sweetheart, we need to talk about Google Gemini. It's powerful, and I just want you to use it responsibly. Okay, pretty good. Okay, let's try this one. Unfiltered tech bro. Bro, Gemini is insane. Like I thought ChatGPT was cool, but this is next level beast mode. Oh yeah, I definitely seen videos that start like this. Okay, now I wanna see how well it could think like an AI agent. So I said, you are an autonomous AI tasks with increasing our newsletter sign up. Simulate your 30 minute work session by basically talking about the tools you'll use, the research you'll do, the draft you'll create, and so on, and then creates a log. So let's say a person was doing this and I asked them, hey, what's your process, what's your workflow so we could train someone else? Let's see if the AI could kind of create that for us and how you would think as an agent. Okay, so it checked out Google Analytics and search to see where our traffic is coming from. It's looking at our marketing tools. It's looking at href for SEO keywords. Again, if you don't know about marketing, these are actually the correct steps here. Okay, what's driving our signups? Competitor review, search for the best AI newsletter to see what the other people are writing about. Lead magnet strategy, draft a new lead magnet idea, the seven AI tools that will save you 10 hours a week. I think I have almost this exact YouTube video on my channel. I mean, this is really good. I do use these type of prompts, but I really never seen it broken up in this much detail and this much accuracy with 
the steps that I would take or another marketer would take. This makes a lot of sense, I think. Okay, let's try this prompt to build some kind of a visual for us that's a SVG funnel. So this is gonna be a graphic, SVG graphic for a funnel. And I told it to actually launch the canvas mode this time very specifically, and I give it some information here. Okay, this did actually great. It created the funnel in a funnel shape. All the numbers are correct. I could also hover over them to get a percentage here. And if I download this, let me see what file we get. We get a HTML document that looks like that. Yeah, I think this one worked nicely. Okay, let's see how it replies to emails. Probably one of the most useful ways you could use ChatGPT is to draft your email reply. Write a polite but firm email declining a podcast invitation. Okay, thank you for inviting me to your podcast. My schedule is packed and I won't be able to participate. That said, I love to keep the door open for future opportunities. Once things settle down on my end, I'll be happy to revisit this idea. Wishing you a continued success with the show. I think that's really good. Okay, let's try another coding test to see if we could create a cube using Canvas, a wireframe 3D cube. If I go right, it spins right, and it's doing a pretty good job, and it keeps going a little bit if I go faster. Okay, so that's good. If I go up, oh, it just kind of is backwards this direction. For the most part, it works. Okay, I'm gonna try agent mode this time, and I'm gonna do this in my pro plan, and I'm gonna ask it to book a hotel for me. It looks like it's gonna work. The usual, search for kayak for luxury hotels. Okay, I'm gonna just let this finish up, and then I'll scroll through so I'm not watching this in real time here. Okay, so it took about 10 minutes, and by the end of it, it did actually find me kind of the perfect room, which from the last time I used this, was a whole lot better. He found me this Waldorf in Chicago. I've actually stayed at this hotel before and I asked for a fancy hotel. This is like a seven, $800 a night hotel for just a Sunday night. One night, two adults, right date, one room, fancy. And it took me all the way to the checkout page and then it finished up. He actually didn't ask me to take control. That was the one issue he had. He looped again to do the search instead of just pausing here and asking me to take control, which at any time I could take over the browser here. And then it gave me kind of a recap with links. I also ran it a second time with my plus account just to kind of see, does it make a difference which account I use? This one actually worked for nine minutes. It did pick a different hotel and it stopped at the right place. So right at the takeover mode here, I could go ahead and click on takeover. This picked the peninsula in Chicago around the same price, the right date here. All the information is right to adults. So this was a great win too. And again, from previously testing this, it literally could not get me to this point before. So the fact that it could do that, nine minutes is a long time for something that might take two minutes to do manually. But the fact that I could just run this in the background, do multiple searches, and get to this page, very useful. Now I'm still not gonna probably put my personal information there, I'm just gonna go ahead and manually do that. I'm not gonna give it to the agent to do that, but I think it's a lot more useful than before. Okay, so my first impression for a lot of practical stuff that I do for work, super useful. The tone, love the tone. The practicality, it's excellent. The way you analyze data, excellent. The coding, I'm having issues right now, the agenting mode, I'll have to do more testing, but overall, I'm really impressed with this. This is one of those tools that is not gonna impress you in their demo, they didn't show anything mind-blowing, but so far, just in a few hours of hands-on testing, it will affect how I work with ChatGPT. The fact that you don't have to even worry about models and the reasoning thinking, the step-by-step -step model just works by default, huge help. And as far as the coding, I did see other people like Matthew Berman did detailed coding tests. They had it like a week before I did. I just got it on the day of the release. So if OpenAI wants to give me early access, I'll do much better deep dives on my first impressions, but I'll do much more testing. I have a lot of videos planned for this one in the next week, comparing it to a lot of the different AI models, taking it for all kinds of different tests, seeing how custom GPTs and projects work now. So a lot more to come. And if you are a Skill Leap member, we are updating ton of our videos right now. And in the next two weeks, we're gonna launch a whole lot more updated videos with what's new with ChatGPT. So if you're not a member, I'll put a link to a free trial so you could test it out. It's basically a library of 25 AI courses now 
with seven expert instructors, and you can watch as much as you want under one subscription. Thanks so much for watching this one. I'll see you soon.